Okay, this is an excerpt from uh, Laura's Facebook page. And what I wanted to illustrate here is the date of her birthday, September 23rd. This is a photo of Rabbi Lipsker. He's a chief rabbi. He was the chief rabbi of Arad. Mm -hmm. And uh, this rabbi hit my wife. What happened? Well, Laura, you want to share some? Okay. Um, our friend Steve was handing out our newspapers and uh, we went to replenish them. We had more newspapers to give him. And we came upon him in the center of town. He was standing beside the chief of police and on the other side was um, Rabbi Lipsker. And when Rabbi Lipsker saw me, he you know, recognized me. He was extremely angry at Steve already. And he saw me, he went livid and he I was filming the whole thing and he reached out and pushed the camera right back into my face, knocking me off balance. The chief of police grabbed him because he tried to hit me a second time and uh, the, the chief prevented that. Well, Laura, you know, when that happened, I wasn't with you guys and I thank God that I wasn't because if this rabbi who hit you, if I hit him back, out of just, you know... Uh, um, Trying to defend me. Yeah. Um, that would be like hitting Al Capone himself. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I wouldn't have lived to see the next day. Something would have happened. Mm -hmm. You know, if they took me down to the police department, the story might have went, like, I reached for the gun, and, boom, and, you know, they had to shoot me three times in the head. But anyhow, that's uh, neither here or there. That didn't happen. But... Um, what did happen, I went down to the police department when I heard about this, and I was like uh, demanding, you know, like action. I wanted them to do something. This guy hit you. I wanted him, the police to do something about it. And I said, you know, you guys don't want me to take the law in my own hands and stuff like that, so I'm reporting it to you. Because a guy hits my wife makes me want to hit him. As soon as I said that, that's when they started writing a report, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, like I threatened the rabbi. But anyhow, um, the whole thing, the newspaper came about because um, the local town newspaper, the Hasfi, belonged to the Orthodox now. And uh, they write articles, all kinds of articles, lies about us and stuff. And we can't write a rebuttal. They will not accept anything from us, our opinion, or whatever. So we printed our own newspaper. Yeah, and in it, you know, we had uh, the salvation message, message on the cover mm -hmm. and in the middle somewhere and on the back page. Also, there was an article in there that probably just pushed the rap by over the top there because usually he just sends his thugs out to handle things. Well, the, the lead article was about, uh, you shall have no other gods before me. And uh, it, it pointed out that the rabbis were taking the place of God in the people's lives and trying to control them and do all kinds of things. And the people were accepting this. Uh, so it was Ezekiel 34 in action. So we wrote an article about it and it made the rabbi mad. But uh, he went down to the police station with the police chief and he put charges against me for hitting him and uh, wow. so I didn't know how they wrote that up, that I hit them with my face. I, I know, it was strange. Well, look, honey. But they, look, wouldn't, they wouldn't take mine. Look, you know, uh, I took this to prayer. You know, I'm saying, hey, God, you know what I mean? I'm trying to be a missionary here. You know, I'm representing you. You know, I can't be going around hitting a rabbi because he hits my wife. What's going on here, you know? I said, Lord, you know, I'm turning this over to you in prayer, you know? And um, I had to uh, say a similar prayer like that <laughs> for a couple of weeks. You know, I got each day, you know, and uh, relenting and uh, this, you know, I didn't want this angle panning up here, but I was upset. I put it on God's plate, you know. And, um, well, anyhow, 
139 שקל, ככה. לא, לא. If she's got water in her hand, you have to be careful, because she'll scatter it at you. If she has Coca-Cola, then she'll make you into a black Christian. Don't come closer, Rabbi. Don't come closer, Rabbi. What the telemetry? What the telemetry? Let's go to the place. You are here and we are going to get to the house. What do you want? 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 Shame on you! Shame on you! I know you should have brought a drawer. Shame on you! Well, this is what. Well, as I said earlier, um, I turned this whole situation of this rabbi hitting my wife over to the Lord. And um, I really did, you know. I didn't, um, you know, do anything physical or within self, you know. But I did bellyate to the Lord. Um, well, a few weeks prior to Laura's next birthday, Rabbi Lipsker became mysteriously ill. And the article you're looking at right now says uh, it was published on 92409. Now, Laura's birthday is on the 23rd. It actually doesn't give the date in this article. It just says, died Wednesday. Um, so, but it talks about on Thursday, morning, you know, um, he, he was wrapped, you know, they wrapped his body and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's a Jewish custom to uh, bury a person within 24 hours, okay, after their death. So um, to clarify this a little bit, because this said it was written, um, the article was written on the 24th, and it says late Wednesday afternoon. So uh, I did a little bit more uh, research. Well, from the internet, I was able to get um, the days of the week. Um, that Laura's birthday, September 23rd, fell on for the last 10 years. So this article was um, dated 9-24-09. And it was referring to, like, uh, you know, the last Wednesday afternoon, the rabbi died. So, 9-24-09 was a Thursday that the article was written. And 9-23 was a Wednesday. So that was the day they were referring to. Wednesday, the 23rd of September, 09, that the rabbi died. He died on Laura's birthday. Rabbi Lifschitz was the founder and head of the Yad Lachim, which is an anti-missionary organization. Um, you can almost say it's an anti-missionary terrorist group they have given us here in Israel, missionaries and pastors. We've caught hell from this organization. Now, this article was written 
um, on 9 23 2011 which is Laura's birthday and they don't give the day of the week but they just give you that date her birthday and then the article goes on to say that he passed away on Thursday night so once again let's take a closer look at these dates Now, this article was written on September 23rd, 2011, Laura's birthday, okay? And when we look at this chart here in front of us, it shows that that day was a Friday. So it was written on a Friday. Laura's birthday was on a Friday. Well, they say this guy died on Thursday. But, it says Thursday night, which, according to Israel, Thursday night is actually Friday. So, once again, we have another opposer to the gospel over here in Israel. A mighty man dying on Laura's birthday again. Notice the date on this article, September 23rd, 2012, Laura's birthday again. This article was an, uh, originally written in, in Hebrew, and I used an online translator to uh, get what I've got, okay? And it's just not that clear. But in essence, on this date, Laura's birthday, 2012, the city basically said enough is enough. The secular Jews, you know, and they had a serious town meeting. And from that date on till today, um, the town has been relatively quiet. There's no more like in your face demonstrations going on. You know, it's like they're not congregating in front of Yakim's house, our pastor's house, you know, screaming obscenities and, and, and all type of slander and, uh, you know, calling his wife a bitch, a whore, et cetera, et cetera. Telling uh, the kids that we're gonna kill your parents, we're gonna burn them, you know, uh, all this crazy stuff. And under the, the skies of uh, a demonstration. That's how these demonstrations are against us believers in this town. Well, you know, when they're doing things like that, the neighbors see and everything. And, and just like when they had that big demonstration at Polly's house and the neighbors protest that, you know, well, it's the neighbors are beginning to say enough is enough. So, uh, like I said, it's been pretty quiet, relatively quiet. You know, uh, you might get a, uh, you know, one of them turn their head when you're, you know, they're approaching you, spit, or on the ground, not on you, you know, something, but not really no major demonstrations anymore. And it's all, you know, started once again on Laura's birthday. Rabbi Yosef, notice the date, once again, Laura's birthday. September 23rd, 2013. Well, according to this article, the evening of Laura's birthday, um, Rabbi Yosef's condition deteriorated and he had to been, be put on a respirator.
So uh, <clears throat> he didn't like the others dying on her birthday. He did die on uh, October 7th, 2013. Well, look, I just thought I'd share with you, you know, all these events that have happened that I know of that happened on her birthday. Um, you do the math, you know. I'm just presenting the facts. And there's another strange thing. These are the big guys, okay, the heavy hitters. And they are worthy of the news. But there's other small fry rabbis that have uh, harassed us. And harassed us, right? And mysteriously have seemed to uh, disappear. Now, like I said, these guys will not make the news. So these birthdays of Laura's that uh, I did not report anything on, who knows? God knows if anything else happened. But like I said, these are the heavy hitters, the head of the Yad Lakeim and the, the head rabbi of a rod and, you know, this Yosef, he's always in the news, big guy. Um.